Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Saturday, January the 15th, and it's an incredibly cold day here in Toronto. It's minus 20 degrees centigrade. <clears throat> I don't think I remember uh, a day as cold as, since I was skiing at Jay Peak in Vermont many, many years ago, standing at the top of the tram where it was about minus 30. Uh, but this is really, really cold. Anyways, today um, I want to look at uh, BOR, VHF Omnidirectional Range, and I want to simulate it. In the previous um, video, we looked at VOR and we looked at the re reception of a signal. Now, VOR is for aircraft. It's a navigational system. and It's for aircraft flying in the sky. But I wanted to see if I could uh, receive the VHF signal at my home location. So that was basically um, a look into using uh, various propagation programs um, to see if we could determine what the received signal level was. So that was the previous uh, video. So in this video, uh, we're going to simulate it. Now, my interest in, in VOR, I guess, stems from a book I read. I guess it was a long, maybe, maybe 20 years ago. It was by R.V. Jones. R.V. Jones was a British scientist. He was an advisor to Prime Minister Churchill. And um, in his book, he described all the various navigational systems they came up with in the 30s and the 40s that they used to identify whose planes belong to who and various ways of using beams um, to direct planes to certain locations. So when I read that book, I was really fascinated by the technology. So I guess that's why I got interested in VOR. Plus, I'm also interested in, in navigation in general. So what I thought I'd do is I ta I'm taking the um, – there's a good uh, Wikipedia page on VHF Omni Range, and in there they list – a lot of the technical parameters. Uh, so there you go. There's a table here with all the various parameters. So what I thought I'd do is I would simulate that in Psychos. Um, I'll simulate the baseband and I'll simulate the RF. And then in the next post, um, I actually have a signal capture of VOR locally in Toronto here. So since Psychos basically um, it doesn't have a lot of hardware interface, I'm going to use GNU radio and we'll build a, a VOR receiver using GNU radio and see if we can actually work out the uh, azimuth from the site. So here's a picture actually of the signal capture I did. I was actually fairly close to the transmitter because I couldn't get, I could see the little carrier here um, at my home location. It was fairly weak. It was, I think, minus 120 or minus 110 dBm, but I couldn't see any of the modulation. So I drove up close to the site to get the signal capture. That's what the signal looks like. Um, there's a carrier at, uh, in this particular case, it's 112.15 megahertz. These are the subcarriers here that are modulated, as we'll see in a minute. They're located at um, the carrier plus 9960 hertz or 9.960 kilohertz plus or minus. Down here at 1020 hertz, about one kilohertz away from the carrier, is the Morse identity signal. In the YYZ uh, DVOR, there is no voice signal. And there's a 30 hertz reference signal buried in here, which you can't see there. So that's the signal capture. Here's a, here's a picture of, uh, now we're looking at, there are two different types of VOR. There's a conventional, and there's the Doppler. So we're going to look at the Doppler principle here. Um, there's a picture of the local um, DVOR. Each one of these little white balls is actually a radome around a what's called an Alfred loop. So it's a horizontal radiating um, element. And there's 48 of them around a circle, plus there's one in the center here. Um, and here's a um, here's kind of a system diagram of how it works. <clears throat> So in the center Alfred loop, like right here, uh, there's a 30 hertz reference signal. And the phase of it is um, defined to be the magnetic north. So the, Alf, the um, DVOR, Doppler VOR, uh, points to magnetic north. So the azimuths from the DVOR are relative not to north, but to magnetic north. So there's a 30 hertz signal, which is a reference for magnetic north. And then what happens is the basically the antennas are switched at a rate of 30 hertz going counterclockwise. 
at, at any instant in time, there'll be one that'll be on here, and that'll be at FS minus FS, and there'll be another one on here that's fed with the FC plus FS. So there's two subcarriers above and below um, FC by 9960 hertz. So at this instant here, this Alfred loop will be fig uh, will be um, transmitting a carrier at FC plus FS, and this one here will be transmitting a carrier at FC minus FS. And there's a commutation of all these antennas uh, at 30 hertz uh, per second. There's a fantastic uh, YouTube video that I've listed there. Um, I think it's reference to, uh, which goes into great deal detail about this. Absolutely amazing. Now, the way this thing works is, let's say you're a plane. <clears throat> and you're in the east here, and you're monitoring the 9960 subcarrier. Let's say you're looking at the positive subcarrier. We'll just consider that for the moment. Now, what happens with the Doppler effect is, when two objects, it's like, let's say, for instance, a train is whistling, and the train is coming to you, the pitch of the whistle will increase as, you, as it comes to you, and as the train passes you, the pitch of the whistle will drop. The same thing here. As this antenna, as these antennas switch, start heading in this direction, they're moving towards the plane. So what that does is it increases, it FM modulates the subcarrier, it increases its frequency. And then as it moves away, it decreases. So if you demodulate the FM on this, this uh, subcarrier, what you'll see is a sine wave of 30 hertz. And you can tell between the difference between this sine wave and this sine wave, the phase difference gives you the azimuth, which is, which is pretty amazing. So that's basically how the DVOR uh, works. So let's look at the baseband simulation. Uh, what's in there. So I'm going to go to Psychos here. So there's my baseband simulator. Now we've got three identity signals here. The first one here is simply a sine wave at 30 hertz, and that's a magnetic north. Okay. Now to that, <clears throat> we add a voice ID. So um, at the particular case of YYZ, there is no voice ID, but if you had a voice signal, You'd filter it from 250 to 2500 hertz. It's kind of like a sideband signal, voice bandwidth, and you'd insert that there. But in our case, we don't have one, so that's zero. And then you put in the Morse signal. So the Morse signal is a tone at one kilohertz. It's actually 1020 hertz, and it's modulated by the Morse signal, which turns the tone on and off. So you take those three signals, and um, you AM modulate a carrier with those. Okay, so I don't have the carrier in here right now. I'll show that in the RF portion, but you would add those three together, one plus blah, 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 the M times these, and that is your AM modulation signal. Now, just for completeness, I've added one of the sidebands in here. These sidebands are added in the RF section. They're not added in the baseband section. Now, <clears throat> what I've done as well is I've created, uh, in Psycho's lab, I've created a structure here to simulate the Morse signal. Okay, so you execute that, and what that does is it creates the um, uh, workspace variable V here, and that's used to modulate the sine wave. We can listen to that. I've got a recording in Audacity here, what the structure sounds like, so let's listen to that. And it, it's the Y, Z, more signal. Here we go. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the structure there. Uh, if we... Um, If we plot the spectrum, I've already plotted the spectrum here, you'll see three things. At the bottom here, you'll see your 30 hertz tone. There's your 1 kilohertz tone that's on and off with the Morse, and there's your subcarrier at 9960. Now let's go to the uh, RF simulation. So I'm going to close this baseband simulation and open the RF simulation, which is this one. Okay, so it's the same picture. We have our mag signal reference. 
got our voice. We've got our uh, Morse ID. We add one to M times these, which is the modulation index. And then we modulate the AM, modulate the carrier frequency, which is cosine FC. And to that, we add the uh, upper sideband and the lower sideband. We don't, we don't AM modulate with the sidebands. We add them later on. <clears throat> and the FM modulation to give us the azimuth angle will be, will be done on the plane receiver in space. So that's the, um, that's the RF, um, RF block diagram. And I was, if I was to plot the spectrum, there's a spectrum there. There's my carrier. Now, for convenience in the simulation, I've used a carrier at 50 kilohertz uh, because, uh, you know, 112 megahertz and these lower frequencies here, I wouldn't, it wouldn't show up on the FFT. So to see it nicely, I've just chosen a lower carrier frequency. There's the uh, 1 kilohertz tone. The 30 kilohertz is kind of buried in here. You don't see it. And those are your plus or minus sidebands. So that's the psycho simulation. How accurate that is, and if... I don't know whether I've made some mistakes in there because I'm basically taking my data from the uh, um, Wikipedia page. But in the next video, in the next post, we're going to actually build a receiver. So we're going to see how accurate this is. I think it's fairly close because if you look at the actual signal, signal capture here, you can see all the various elements. Although this is near field, so I'm not too sure if all these uh, peaks here are uh, just because we're too close to the transmitter. Anyways, um, we'll wait till the uh, we'll wait till the next post when we do the receiver.